Did you know that the concept of caloric restriction dates back to at least the 1500s? A Venetian nobleman named Luigi Cornaro indulged in life's pleasures a bit too much, but he lived to be 102 years old. So how did he do it? To rid himself of chronic pain from his gluttony, he incorporated fasting into his diet, restricting his food and wine. He called it de la vita sobria, which was translated into English as the art of living long. That sounds great, but what do we know about fasting now? Can it really impact our health? There are three types of fasting that we're currently studying caloric restriction, time-restricted eating, and intermittent fasting. With caloric restriction, you have three meals a day, but these are lower in calories. The second, time-restricted eating, allows 10 hours of eating with a 14-hour fast, which reduces weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol in pre-diabetic patients. And the final intervention is an alternate day caloric restriction, which is an intermittent fasting intervention which reduces asthma. One thing we know is that all three methods blunt inflammation, though how this occurs remains a mystery. Thus, we designed a short-term clinical protocol to study immune regulation in response to different fasting periods. We had 28 healthy volunteers. The group fasted overnight, then ate a 500 calorie meal, fasted for 24 hours, followed by another meal. Research bloods were drawn after the overnight and 24 hour fasts, and three hours after the second meal. This is the refed state. And these are the results. The 24 hour fast had a greater effect than the overnight fast in blunting immune activation. Fasting reduced inflammation in different immune cells. We focused on T cells, linked to inflammatory diseases and diabetes. We found a novel, fasting-dependent protein called FOXO4 that blunted inflammation in T cells linked to diabetes, Th1 cells, and autoimmune diseases, Th17 cells. Well, where do we go from here? Fasting and the effect of fasting is really the foundation of our studies going forward. We are going to continue looking at how FOXO4 alters gene function in immune cells to blunt their inflammation in the hope of finding pharmacologic targets to directly blunt inflammation linked to diabetes and inflammatory diseases. We have initiated time-restricted eating protocols for longer-term models to expand our understanding of how dietary restriction improves immune health. I believe Conora would be amazed at how far we've come with the science to support his art. I'm Michael Sack. I'm a senior investigator at the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute.